Do you want to be the boss that everyone wants to work for? Do you want to be the boss that others emulate? Do you want to be one of the bosses that people really look up to and when they think about what right looks like for leadership, they think of you? Keep watching because I'm going to give you five traits, five characteristics, five ways of being to be that leader. If we haven't met before, I'm Daryl Black. This series is Leadership Unscripted. It's a often sarcastic look at leadership because I think it's time that we have honest, frank, and maybe not always politically correct conversations, always being respectful, of course. In previous episodes or a previous episode, I've done the five toxic boss. So if you aspire to be that boss that nobody wants to work for or that people really dread, they get a pit in their stomach when they come to work, then watch that video as well. The description will be below. And as always, if you get value, give us a like, give us a subscription, share. All right, let's get into it, shall we? The number one thing that you should be as a leader, if you want to be that leader, is be authentic, okay? Be authentic. Well, what the heck does that mean? You do you. You be you. One of the challenges that I see throughout my career, whether it be in the consulting world or when I facilitate workshops or programs or anything like that, is people try to be someone that they're not. And while I get it, I totally understand the intention behind that, right? There's a difference between trying to model behavior and trying to be something or someone that you, that you aren't. There's a misconception, I think, that people think that a leader needs to be bombastic and a great you know, order and command the room and all of those other things. And while I would certainly agree that that helps, it absolutely does, depending on the circumstances and situation, that's not the only way to lead people. There is not a one size fits all with regard to leadership. So when you're being authentic, you're being true to yourself, you're being true to your own values. You aren't trying to adopt somebody else's kind of personality or, or their demeanor or how they interact with other people because that comes across as inauthentic and people naturally don't trust that, okay? So number one, be authentic. Number two, if you want to be the boss that others want to work for or that they want to emulate or when people think about a good or great leader they think of you, be vulnerable, okay? Be vulnerable. <sighs> Let's be clear. Vulnerability is not exposing your deepest, darkest secrets. It's not saying that, you know, my dad didn't hug me when I was young. True story. Anyways, whatevs. Okay, maybe that's a conversation for another episode. All right. Being vulnerable is, is leaning into something without knowing what the outcome is. It is about admitting that you don't have all the answers. It's about coming across as somebody that is not perfect, that you're not invincible. And the reason that's important is because people need to connect with their leaders, especially now. Back in the day, uh, we've always needed to connect, let's be clear, but leadership looked different. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I know that when I do workshops and, and all of those other things, the word vulnerable never would have come up 10 years ago, but it comes up now. Being vulnerable is, is leaning into something, knowing that you don't know the outcome and also allowing others to share in that vulnerability and really see the humanity, see the human side of leadership, see the human side of you. Now, again, that's not sitting there and bawling your eyes out, right? There's a big difference between oversharing and boundaries around with vulnerability. And I talked about those in other episodes, but that's the second one, be vulnerable. So we have be authentic, be vulnerable. The third one is be empathetic, okay? Be empathetic. What does that mean? Well, empathy, Contrary to popular belief, there's a difference between empathy and sympathy. I discussed that in other uh, episodes, particularly my conversation with Rob Volpe. We'll link that in the description below as well, or in-depth discussion around empathy. Empathy is a way to understand and connect with people. And it's not about agreeing with somebody else. It's not about, um, you know, being closed off. It's really about seeing where they come from, putting yourself in their shoes. And Rob in our episode goes into great detail around emotional and cognitive um, empathy, and I won't spend a lot of time on that, but being empathetic puts yourself in other people's shoes, particularly those on your team. Because if you can understand where they're coming from, at least cognitively, then you can start to reach out and 
reach, uh, you know, figure out where they're coming from, what motivates them, what they're looking for, what they need from you. And within that comes how you can connect with them. Okay. So be authentic, be vulnerable and be empathetic. Hold space for somebody else. The fourth one, once you've been empathetic, for example, be compassionate. Okay. Be compassionate. So what does compassion mean? It means understanding that other people are experiencing challenges, understanding that folks sometimes need help, understanding that, you know what, sometimes people are homeschooling their kids, particularly during this period of pandemic, understanding that not everyone can give 150% all the time. Being compassionate to somebody who has a death in the family or they have an aging parent and maybe, maybe they aren't 100% all the time. Conversely though, or related to that is what about self-compassion? How about recognizing that you're doing the best you can? And I know that if we spoke to our friends like we speak to ourselves internally, we wouldn't have any friends. You know, that cliche. And I can't stress that enough is be compassionate. People really need compassion in this day and age. Number five, be kind. Be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. If we were all just kinder in this world, man, oh man, how much more freaking awesome would this place be? And if you're kind amongst in your workplace or in your communities or on your, in your families, people will really aspire. People will to be like you. People will want to be around you. People will want to be sharing in your experiences. People will want to be helping you. And here's the bonus. And this underlines and undermines everything. Be respectful. Be respectful. A lot of folks come up to me and say, Daryl, my team just doesn't respect me. I'm their, I'm their boss. Yeah, totally get it. Do you respect them? If you want to be respected, if you want to have respect, you need to be respectful. You need to show others respect first. So those are the elements. So hopefully that was valuable to you. There's a whole bunch of work to unpack that, but really that's the roadmap for what right looks like. If you want to be that leader that others want to work for, if you want to be the leader that others are, are aspiring to be or they want to, to work for, those are some things that you can start working on and really moving forward to understand and connect with that team. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember, subscribe, like, share.